All right. Again, thank you everybody for joining us today. We are here to talk about spring fundraising on gagives.org. So just to get us started with a brief agenda, what, what you can all expect to cover today, uh, we are going to start with a quick uh, preview on kind of where we are with spring fundraising this year, a few tips to start your campaign planning, some guidelines to help you determine what kind of a campaign you'll want to happen this spring. Uh, there's different uh, options available. And then kind of to further that conversation, we will jump into some campaign inspiration for you, share some examples of other uh, spring fundraisers that have been successful on the platform to give you some ideas of where you can start in terms of planning your event. Um, go over a few platform reminders at the end. And as I mentioned, I uh, have some Q&A available. So if you do have any questions, feel free to type them into that GoToWebinar control panel on the side of your screen. We will answer any questions at the end. Um, also, for anybody who's joining a few minutes late, we are going to be recording the presentation today. So a recording will be available and shared uh, with everybody else, um, all the attendees uh, post-event. Uh, last thing to mention, we are joined by uh, Louisa Raposo at uh, the Georgia Center for Nonprofits. So she is listening right alongside us. Uh, she may pop in at some point later, um, but she is here with us today. Um, if you do have any questions that are more related to uh, Georgia Center for Nonprofits and uh, kind of their their support for uh, the Georgia Gives platform. Um, and I am uh, Bethany. I'm the Director of Community Engagement here at Mighty Cause, who is the technology platform partner for uh, Georgia Gives. All right. So as I mentioned, I wanted to start uh, with just kind of a brief check-in on where fundraising stands this spring. So last year, of course, in the spring, we know everything was interrupted, you know, for very many things, one of them being fundraising. A lot of nonprofits had to change their spring fundraising plans, move from traditional in-person events, galas, walks, et cetera, move things online or just cancel them altogether. Uh, but uh, Georgia Center for Nonprofits hosted a large campaign, Giving Tuesday Now, in partnership with, of course, the Global Giving Tuesday movement. Um, they hosted that uh, event on the georgiagives.org platform. And it really was uh, a success, a lot of opportunity for nonprofits across the state of Georgia who were looking for a way to either fundraise for the increased demand that they were seeing for their programs uh, or pivot some of their traditional events to a more digital campaign. Over 700 nonprofits were a part of that campaign. Uh, over a million dollars was raised. And so our goal is to help make sure that you all know uh, what options you have uh, to continue to take advantage of the Georgia Gives platform this spring. Of course, we're in a different place than we were a year ago, uh, but virtual and digital fundraising campaigns still are uh, the best option in many locations. Uh, of course, uh, vaccine rollout is different in many places, and there are some uh, areas, communities, et cetera, that are getting more comfortable with in-person engagement. And if that works for you, that's great. Um, but virtual and digital campaigns are still likely going to be a key part of your fundraising for this spring into summer. Unlike last year, uh, most nonprofits are a little bit older and wiser. Uh, they've had a bit more experience adapting to uh, COVID and virtual fundraising. Um, you've got hopefully a bit more time uh, to be planning because it's not necessarily an emergency crisis response uh, type of fundraising. You can look back at what worked last year, what did your organization do last year. <clears throat> and of course, as I mentioned, the Georgia Gives platform is still available. So for any nonprofits that were a part of the Giving Tuesday campaign last spring, uh, you can easily come back to the platform if you're not actively using it on a regular basis and host another campaign right around that same time frame. If that works for you, you can start it earlier, you can start it later in the month of May. Whatever works for your organization's fundraising calendar, 
but the Georgia Gives platform is available all year round for nonprofits to continue taking advantage of the same tools that help you host a great Giving Tuesday campaign. So just a, a little bit of additional context here. Of course, 2020 giving was different for a lot of nonprofits, uh, but across the board, it really was a strong year for fundraising, a strong year for giving. Uh, small donations really increased. Um, there were a lot of new donors. We saw across uh, almost all of the giving days that happened on the Mighty Cost platform last year, uh, there was significant growth over the year before. Uh, for those donors that were in a position to make charitable donations, they were doing so, and they were doing so even more than they had in the past. And I think, as I already mentioned, there's a lot of nonprofits that saw a dramatic spice, spike in the need for their programs. And so, uh, luckily, there was a lot of fundraising and giving sort of in, uh, in alignment with that. So, of course, Spring 2021, slightly different. Uh, that sort of theme, and again, the emergency response feeling is starting to uh, starting to perhaps shift, but giving is still strong uh, so far this year. And so your organization definitely has the opportunity to be a part of that. A couple of things to keep in mind as you think uh, more generally about what your organization wants to focus on this spring with your fundraising. Uh, retention, always, always important, especially as I was just mentioning, lots of new donors and smaller donors gave last year, whether it was through your Giving Tuesday campaign in December or a Giving Tuesday Now campaign you hosted last spring, or just another donor that found your organization for the first time in 2020 because they were made aware of your services, whatever it might be, uh, really important to make sure that you have a plan for retention of those donors. How are you going to continue engaging them? Hopefully you've been engaging them so far. Thank you, sharing impact, following up, making sure they can continue to be involved in your organization. But think about that group in particular when you're planning a spring campaign. How will you speak to that group to get them to become a retained more regular consistent donor for your organization. Uh, building on that, of course, recurring donations, uh, always an important um, message for nonprofits, but I think the year 2020 really helped uh, both nonprofits and donors perhaps reevaluate the importance of sustainability within nonprofits that they're supporting, nonprofits that are essential to their community, uh, because of course, uh, when when traditional fundraising events changed, when traditional methods dried up, organizations that had a sustainable source of funding from a strong recurring giving program were in a much better position to weather that storm. So if you haven't focused on recurring giving in your organization, now might be a great time to host a recurring giving campaign. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, um, but this is, a uh, key option uh, through the Georgia Gives platform uh, to encourage recurring donations. You have tons of tools as the nonprofit to manage your recurring donations, see who these donors are, email these donors through the platform. You'll get a notification when a donor uh, is about to lapse or a credit card has expired, the donor will get a notification. So there's lots of tools built into the platform to try and make recurring giving uh, easier for your nonprofit to manage and to uh, sustain these important donors. And finally, when it comes to the messaging, this will of course be different for different nonprofits and what works for some may not make any sense for the other, but the COVID messaging has been uh, really exhausted, I think in a lot of cases by this point, it's been a full year of donors hearing about that message. Uh, heavy messages in 2020. And so if it works for your nonprofit, there is an opportunity for your spring campaign to keep it a bit lighter, uh, keep it hopeful, uh, make it a little more fun. Um, again, if that doesn't make sense for your mission and the work that you're doing, of course, you know your audience best. But I think for any nonprofit, you can really consider uh, this spring 
how can you build engagement as a part of your fundraising campaign? So whether that means trying peer-to-peer -peer fundraising or hosting some sort of live stream activity, uh, the goal being how can you bring donors together? How can you bring supporters together? Because I think across all missions, uh, whatever your nonprofit does, that feeling of a sense of community, uh, being a part of something is something that donors are uh, really looking for after the year uh, that has been over the last 12 months or so. So uh, just a few key things to keep in mind uh, in sort of kicking off, getting started with your campaign planning. Great place to start always is what, what does your organization really need? Um, where do you uh, need to fill funding gaps this year? Are there specific programs that are relevant right now uh, that you want to be focusing on? Um, are there still COVID needs that your organization has to uh, has to fund, has to support? If so, um, you know, I was just talking about sort of changing that messaging. It doesn't mean you can't still raise funds. People are still experiencing many of the same things that they were a year ago, but maybe trying a new twist on that messaging this year. And then what else, um, what else is going on this spring through summer? Uh, any special dates, anything that you uh, can tie your organization's uh, efforts to? For example, tomorrow is Earth Day. Um, maybe it's a little late to throw a campaign together, but I've definitely seen it done on a tighter timeline. Um, but look at the calendar, what's going on, what are people going to be hearing about on social media, what are people going to be thinking about, um, and if there isn't a special day, you can always create one for your own organization. Um, as I mentioned, many nonprofits participated in the Giving Tuesday Now campaign last year, which I think was May 5th, uh, right around May 5th, if that wasn't the exact date. Uh, you can absolutely take advantage of that same first Tuesday in May um, and build a campaign on your own around that date. And uh, another thing, you know, we sort of talked about it a little bit in terms of many organizations are a full year into evaluating uh, and perfecting uh, COVID fundraising, uh, but take a look at what has worked for your organization in the past year, uh, what hasn't, uh, are there certain strategies that you haven't yet tackled because you're not sure how to incorporate them into a um, into a more digital campaign? Is there something that you've done in the past as a spring fundraiser? You had to cancel it last year, uh, but you'd like to find a way to creatively bring it back this year. Always helpful, I think, to start a campaign uh, reviewing some of this information so that you can set proper goals and really set yourself up for success in knowing uh, you know, what kind of a campaign is really gonna have the best impact for your nonprofit based on your audience and your needs at the current moment. All right, so now we are gonna talk about different types of fundraising campaigns. And by this, I really mean kind of the structure of your campaign and how you're thinking about it. So on the georgiagives.org platform, on the Mighty Cause platform, there are really three distinct types of campaigns that a nonprofit can run. The first is a fundraiser. This is the simplest option. Uh, it's something uh, that, well, most of these are this case, but let's say you decide you wanna have an Earth Day fundraiser. You could come to the Georgia Gives platform as soon as this webinar is over, very quickly build a fundraising page and pop it in an email by end of day today, early tomorrow. So it's very simple to get this type of campaign up and running. Basically, it's just a single page campaign. You can set a dedicated goal. You can you know, add imagery, video, content, et cetera, to the page. You'll see a donation timeline where you're tracking you know, as donors are making their gift. It's really just a dedicated space to focus on a particular initiative. So whether it's you know, a spring fundraising goal to raise $10,000 for a new program uh, or whatever it might be, fundraiser page just gives you um, a dedicated page to talk about that. You've got one 
link. That's the link you're sharing on social media. That's the link you're sharing in email. That's the link you're asking board members to share. S simple kind of one-to-one -one campaign there. Both of the other two options, teams and events, are built off of peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising. And so teams and events are just kind of two different ways to approach peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising. And um, it depends on your campaign, the complexity of your campaign, which of those options is going to work better for you. Uh, but the key things to know about a team fundraising page, basically, you're having um, a, a team landing page that allows for a group of peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers to all come together and fundraise. So uh, I always like to use the example here of a board fundraising challenge. Let's say you decide to create a team fundraising page for your board members. Each individual board member will have their own fundraiser page. They'll have their own dedicated page where they can have a goal. They can talk about their engagement with your nonprofit. That's their individual page to share with family, friends, coworkers, et cetera. And all the funds that's raised, that are raised from any of the board members will roll up into your team page. So the team page is kind of a fun way to show uh, the success and the results across all of those individual peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. You have the opportunity to add photos, videos, copy, and you'll have a leaderboard as well where you can kind of engage some friendly competition perhaps between your board members to encourage them to raise more funds. And an event is really just one step above a team in that an event makes a lot more sense if you're hosting a uh, maybe a walkathon, a golf tournament, uh, something bigger like that, where you might have individuals starting a fundraiser to join your event and raise funds for your nonprofit, but you might also have groups of individuals, teams. So uh, let's say you do have a walkathon in your area and uh, a local brewery, for example, wants to be involved in the event. They want to have a team of their employees that participate in your walkathon. So your walkathon can have its own page. That brewery has a team page. And then individual employees of that brewery have the option to have their own fundraising page as a part of it. So it's really just an additional layer of hierarchy. Uh, it also lets you add uh, a component like registration. Uh, we integrate with Eventbrite. So if you are doing an event like a walkathon or something like that where you'd like uh, participants to register before fundraising, events might be the right type of product for you. So <clears throat> just kind of a different way of looking at that. Fundraiser page is pretty simple. Your nonprofit has one distinct page. That's what you're sending to donors. That's how donors are coming in. With a team or an event, you are amplifying the traditional outreach that your nonprofit is going to do to your existing donor base by leveraging an entire new group of individuals, teams, or individuals um, that will be contacting their own networks. So you're really, really doubling, tripling, whatever it might be. Uh, the reach that your event can have. You're amplifying the message of your campaign. So if you're not quite sure what feels like the right fit for you, a fundraiser is the right choice if you're not interested in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, whether it's that you don't have the capacity or you're just not really sure now is the right time to try and engage peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers to raise money for you. Um, you want to keep it simple. You have to do something quick. Uh, you're trying to get a campaign and email out the door ASAP. Um, and your primary goal is just to engage your existing audience of donors to make a gift. In that case, fundraiser is a great option. Now, I will say uh, that if your uh, hesitation or your desire not to include peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is more because you haven't tried it yet, or you're just concerned that it's not the right fit for your audience, you're worried you're asking too much of them, I really do consider you to encourage giving it a shot. Um, what we see consistently across the Mighty Cause platform is that peer-to-peer -peer fundraising brings in more donors and more dollars for nonprofits. 
And what's more, you really have an opportunity to deepen the relationship with those individuals that create peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers for your nonprofit. You're now kind of continuing the stewardship relationship with those individuals because now they're not just a donor. They're not just a monthly donor. They're a donor that has also fundraised on your behalf. They have advocated for your organization. And so you're really deepening the relationship there. So if you're just a little hesitant to try peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, I really encourage you to consider giving it a shot uh, this time around. Um, as we've already talked a little bit about, team or event might be the right fit if peer-to-peer -peer is important to you. If you know that you want to try and engage other individuals to fundraise on your behalf. You want a little bit more uh, customization on the actual fundraising page. You want that leaderboard that has sort of a, a more friendly competitive aspect. Uh, you're really looking to engage and reach brand new donors uh, that will be coming from your peer-to-peer -peer networks. And as I mentioned, some of those larger types of campaigns, Charity Walk, 5K, et cetera, those are all much better supported through a team or event type of page. And so now that we've sort of set the foundation of uh, what types of campaigns are available to choose from, uh, I want to go through a, a handful of ideas that we've seen work really well on the platform for other nonprofits. You may find one of these examples is the perfect fit for your organization and you're ready to jump right in and start planning. You may find that you want to pull components from one campaign or another, or you may be more creative than I am, and you may think of your own wonderful version that isn't shared here. Uh, but the goal here is really just to kind of uh, get the creative juices flowing uh, and see what some other nonprofits have done that has been successful so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel and start from scratch. So the first, as I mentioned earlier, is a recurring giving campaign. So in this option, you can use a single fundraising campaign, uh, fundraising page. <clears throat> you have the option within your uh, fundraising page to control the uh, settings of the checkout flow. So you can encourage and sort of default donors into a monthly gift. So when donors come to your checkout page now, they are defaulted as a standard uh, to giving a one-time donation, but have the option to select monthly recurring. If you're hosting a recurring giving campaign, you can default them right into that monthly gift so that they have to make a choice if they don't want to give recurring. Uh, and by focusing on a recurring giving campaign, aside from what I've already mentioned uh, in terms of the sustainability uh, and the benefit for your organization, uh, it also allows you to appeal to a different donor, or appeal differently to existing donors. For donors that um, you know might have had a year of a, of a fairly difficult financial situation, committing to a lower regular contribution might be easier, might feel mentally less daunting than a larger one-time gift. Um, and you have the option to kind of design your messaging around, around how they can think about a small monthly gift, whether it's what that uh, impact allows them, allows your nonprofit to do by giving X every month, for example, or whether it's you know, kind of the more traditional, um, you know, sacrifice a cup of coffee each week. Uh, there's lots of different options that you can do, but it allows you for slightly different messaging than you might have for one of your standard fundraising campaigns. So it's a, it's a different call to action, slightly different messaging that might feel new and refreshing for some of your donors if they've seen the same type of campaigns over and over. Um, if you don't have a recurring giving campaign in place, um, you'll want to take just a few moments to think through some, uh, some things related to building that campaign. Do you want to have tiers, for example, you know, donors that give $50 a month are 
advocates and any donor that gives over $100 a month is a champion and every donor that gives over $200 a month is your um, executive funders circle, for example. Uh, creating sort of uh, messaging around these different labels helps to let donors identify to you know those tiers. You can also build in your checkout flow you can build a donation level. What does $50 mean? You know, it's putting you in this group. Um, it doesn't, uh, it, it can also uh, go along with different um, benefits or I'm not exactly sure benefits is the right word, uh, but different things that they have access to. So for example, maybe you decide to do a monthly email newsletter that only goes to your recurring donors. Maybe you decide to do an open house with your nonprofit later this year and you're only inviting monthly donors or only inviting monthly donors over a certain amount. Um, maybe you decide to have a live conversation with your executive director and you're opening it up to monthly donors. There's lots of things that you can do uh, to kind of create a package that allows these monthly donors to feel like they're a part of something bigger, a part of something. Um, special they're kind of in the inner circle for your nonprofit you don't have to spend a lot of money necessarily to create these benefits you can use what you have use what makes sense for your organization uh, but taking some time to think about that ahead of time will help you build out your campaign and then also post campaign will help you funnel these donors into the right flows within your nonprofit so that you're taking good care of this very special group of recurring donors. And I already mentioned there's lots of tools built into the platform that make it easier to take care of these recurring donors, to know when their gift is about to process, email them through the platform, follow up through the platform if their, um, if their uh, card expires, for example. And donors can really easily manage their recurring gift. They can come back at any time and cancel it if they want. They can change the date that it processes. They can increase the amount that they give. Uh, they can choose what day of the month it always processes. So there's a lot of tools built in that make this easy. So if you haven't done this before, this year might be a great time to build a recurring giving campaign. Another option is hosting your own giving day. So uh, we've talked a little bit about Giving Tuesday now last year. Um, and as I've mentioned, if that worked for your organization, there's no reason that you can't do it again. Whether you just host a single fundraising page and you tie it back into that campaign, or uh, you build an event page where you get board members and other supporters to come and fundraise together all on a single day, kind of a giving marathon, Borrowing a lot of the same things that make the Giving Tuesday campaign in the fall a success, you're just kind of recreating that within your own organization, using that as an opportunity to create urgency. Um, maybe you get a matching grant, for example, to add some of the fun that comes from the prize grants that come in the Giving Tuesday campaign. Look at what works for the, uh, you know, for that larger. Giving Tuesday campaign and try to recreate uh, within your own community that same excitement, that same attention around a single focused day or week, for example. <clears throat> uh, Fundraise-a-thons. Uh, I've talked a little bit about walk-a-thons already, uh, but there is uh, an endless list of a-thons that you could put together for a spring fundraising campaign. And on the Mighty Cause platform, uh, we've seen all different variations. Write-a-thons, read-a-thons, swim-a-thons, dance-a-thons, art-a-thons, bike-a-thons, you name it, yoga-thons, lots of different things uh, that we've seen uh, work. So you can decide what makes sense for your mission, what makes sense for your community. But the standard kind of uh, walkathon uh, type works, uh, you know, works great and has lots of different um, that can be available for any type of nonprofit. Um, it is an easy thing for individuals to um, to participate in. They can understand their part 
in the overall event. They can sign up, they can create their own page as a part of your a-thon, but it's really easy for them to see how they can participate, how they can be a part of it. And of course, having something unique like this allows you to engage perhaps a corporate sponsor, whether it's providing a matching incentive for your campaign or um, having some kind of rewards, gifts in kind uh, that go to the fundraiser that raises the most as a part of your uh, fundraise-a-thon you know, restaurant gift card, t-shirt, whatever it might be. Um, great opportunity to uh, to build that into your campaign. Give a little bit of extra incentive to those fundraisers uh, to help them, uh, encourage them on their way. Uh, Charity Walk, kind of building off what I just mentioned. Um, one of the reasons this uh, can still be such a great uh, idea now uh, in COVID times is that you can really easily transition this to a virtual event where you are minimizing the logistics that your organization has to put together in hosting a physical walk. You're just encouraging individuals to walk on their own. You know, maybe it's a two mile walk that you're encouraging all participants to do and you're asking them to share where they're doing their walking. They can do it on their own time and schedule. You're not bringing people together uh, in person, so you avoid uh, both the safety and logistical uh, concerns from that aspect, but you get to still do a lot of the same things that make a charity walk fun. Uh, you can send, uh, you know, swag bags or other kinds of rewards to all participants or just participants who raise over a certain amount. Um, and by having, uh, you know, by incorporating social media, using uh, your communications tools, both within the platform and then, you know, external uh, email communication, you can create a feeling of community between all of these individuals that are walking on behalf of your organization, even if you're not doing it together in person. As I mentioned, uh, already, uh, we do have an integration with Eventbrite, so if you are hosting a traditional charity walk where people are going to be together in person and you'd like them to register first before they create their fundraiser, uh, you can uh, connect an Eventbrite um, event through your uh, page, event page on georgiagives.org. <clears throat> Uh, I've already shared a little bit of the example of a board fundraising challenge. Uh, I like this because every nonprofit has a board of directors they could potentially lean on to do this type of challenge. Many nonprofits have a board of directors that don't get as involved in fundraising as you might like. Um, and so this is a really good, um, clear way to get your board members more involved in fundraising. Uh, you can make it super simple for them. Uh, in both of the team and event fundraising product, you can set up a template for them. So they really have a few clicks to publish their page. They don't have to spend a ton of time filling out a fundraising page, just a few clicks. They've got their own dedicated page, their own link that they can start sharing. Um, and then uh, you can kind of focus on the parts of the campaign uh, that will actually get them spreading the word. Uh, whether you decide to have some kind of internal competition between your board members, who can raise the most funds, who can engage the most uh, donors, or maybe it's sort of a reverse competition and the board member that brings in the least is responsible for um, bringing food to the next board meeting, whatever it might be, something that you think might uh, engage your board, get them excited about this. And you can also kind of build in, uh, just like we encourage with all other peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaigns, some tips and resources that your board can use to fundraise. So draft a sample email that they might be able to just copy and paste and send out to their people. Uh, draft a sample uh, social media poster too. Uh, give them a few talking points, highlights. Now, of course, your board members, uh, maybe above and beyond regular peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, you'd think they would already have all the talking points, and maybe they do, but it might still be helpful to get some of that support from you so that they don't have to think as much about it. They're busy, but if they have something, they're like, okay, my goal is to email 10 people today. My goal is to call three people today. Whatever it might be, you make 
uh, the goal of uh, fundraising a bit more structured for your board members to to bring them uh, as on, bring them on board. <clears throat> Digital gala, uh, of course, uh, lots of organizations typically host a gala in the spring. So whether you were planning to do that or not, uh, you still can uh, take advantage of a lot of the things that make a gala fun uh, and move it virtual. Uh, one of the nonprofits on our platform still wanted to host their same uh, gala and they allowed for table captains. Each table captain sort of had their own uh, fundraising page and they were um, getting other donor supporters to to you know, sort of buy into their virtual table, donate through their fundraiser. And then on the actual night of what would have been their gala or what might traditionally be their gala, there still is a live stream component where uh, they're sharing whatever their program is traditionally for the evening, whether it's entertainment, uh, speeches from the executive director, whether they give out an award, whatever it might be. Um, again, uh, an opportunity here to, to use the Eventbrite integration, um, but lots of things that you can do here. Uh, I've even seen uh, one nonprofit do a virtual uh, cooking class where they had donors um, sign up for the cooking class, and then they're sending out uh, a recipe and ingredients list, and then host a live stream uh, where they're actually kind of making the recipe together. So that's another kind of fun alternative to that. A photo contest, something that we've seen a lot of nonprofits do. Again, if it's something that makes sense for your mission uh, and who you serve, uh, lots of animal organizations uh, really know how to make the most of this type of um, campaign. Uh, a donation counts as a vote, for example. So whether it's building out a calendar uh, or <clears throat> trying to uh, just pick a winner for a, you know, a t-shirt maybe that you're going to build out. Uh, it's just a fun way to, to add engagement and excitement to a standard uh, giving campaign. Again, um, just like with others, uh, there are, you can always build rewards into, uh, into a peer-to-peer -peer campaign like this. Golf tournament, traditional spring into summer fundraiser. Uh, this is something that uh, may be happening more in person this year than happened last year. Uh, again, you can, uh, you could decide to do a virtual, uh, virtual round of golf where you, you encourage participants to do a round of golf on their own, or you can partner with a local golf course to try and uh, host your campaign uh, in partnership with them. Uh, certain days of the week. Um, are obviously going to be easier for public golf courses to uh, to be able to support your campaign, um, but that might be a great opportunity to um, you know to to transition back into in-person fundraising events this year. Um, you know that builds in a partnership with the tournament. Lots of opportunities for sponsors, particularly in golf tournaments. They can sponsor a hole. They can sponsor a team of uh, golfers to come together. Uh, and again, uh, lots of the same tools that work on all of these campaigns, having a template that you share with, um, that you build into the page so it's really easy for fundraisers to get started, having a toolkit of resources so it's really easy for the fundraisers to know how to spread the word and raise money, having fun rewards um, and incentives available to encourage those top fundraisers. So, like I said, my goal was just to hopefully spark some inspiration, um, get your uh, creative juices flowing about how to borrow some of those fundraising campaigns uh, for what might be your nonprofit's fundraising campaign. So just a few quick reminders before we take any questions. Um, so first, if you haven't been back on the GA Gives platform since December, Great opportunity to pop back in and refresh your account settings. So taking a look at your organization's profile page, making sure the logo, um, most likely your logo hasn't changed since, since the fall, but perhaps it has. Make sure it looks good. Um, maybe refresh any of the images that are on your page, update the story, reset the metrics if 
if you might be using or directing people to that profile page at all. Take a look through your settings. Make sure the right individuals have access to your organization's account on the platform. You can have up to 10 administrators for your nonprofit. So uh, take a quick look. Maybe there's people that no longer work for your nonprofit. You can remove them as administrators. Uh, or you can add anybody new, whether it's just a new staff member or uh, another person of the team that has never had access to the platform before. And of course, always good on a fairly regular basis to review uh, your organization's um, both EFT information uh, for direct deposit disbursements. Uh, if you haven't signed up for direct deposit, now is as great a time as any to do so. Uh, make sure your legal address, display name, all that is up to date. Uh, just a quick spring cleaning check on your platform settings. Update your checkout flow. Make sure that you're not still talking about uh, Giving Tuesday or fall or the holidays, for example, if you're gonna reuse your page. Uh, update the donation levels. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned a little bit uh, earlier, uh, but there are lots of options within your checkout flow to really customize it so you can add donation levels and descriptions, whether it's for a recurring giving campaign or another campaign you might be running. Uh, you can set the default to be a recurring gift, or you can hide recurring uh, off of your page if that's something that doesn't make sense for the campaign that you're running. Uh, check on the thank you page and the receipt that gets sent out. Again, making sure that you don't have any out of date language there or if you're hosting a new campaign with a distinct message now, making sure that that's consistent there. Uh, and finally, for anybody that hasn't uh, had a chance to trial it yet, uh, there is an advanced subscription available on the George Gives platform. So uh, the, the teams and events and fundraisers and everything that you're used to using for your Giving Tuesday campaign is all available to you today. Log into the Georgia Gives platform. You have of access to all of those tools because you are a part of Georgia Gives. But there are additional tools, kind of advanced tools, that are an option to amplify your fundraising if it makes sense for your organization. So depending on what other fundraising tools you use on a year-round basis, whether you're evaluating what other fundraising tools you use, whether you don't have other great fundraising tools and you're trying to figure out where to start, or you're just looking to streamline your efforts and um, eliminate or minimize some of the external platforms that your fundraising team is having to work with, you can take a look and do a uh, two week free trial of the advanced subscription. You can get access to an embeddable donation form that you can customize and put on your website. So whether it's replacing a PayPal button or a square button that isn't branded and takes people off of your website, um, or uh, replacing another uh, donation system that you might be using. We have a built-in CRM system right into our product, kind of a light CRM that we call our supporters tool. We also have an integration with Salesforce if you happen to be using Salesforce already for your CRM so you can automate that data entry. We have other integrations, MailChimp. Uh, just last week we, we released a integration with Google Analytics and we also integrate with Zapier, which is a huge library of thousands of applications, including QuickBooks, all the Google tools, et cetera. So lots of opportunities to integrate and make your fundraising more efficient and more effective, give you more time to focus on uh, things like stewardship uh, and engagement with your donors. We have text to give that you can build into any, uh, you can add on a text to give keyword to any fundraising campaign that you might be running volunteer management tools, uh, advanced options for branding and data collection in the checkout flow. Uh, so lots that comes available in that advanced subscription. Uh, spring fundraising campaign might be a great time to trial it out, see if it's a good fit for your organization, see if it's something that you wanna invest in on a year round basis or something that you might um, just uh, activate again during the fall as a part of your Giving Tuesday campaign to make your fundraising campaign even more successful at that time. You can access it right through your uh, settings on um, in your account. And uh, as always, uh, just as is the case during the fall and your Giving Tuesday campaign, the Mighty Cause team is here to support you 
We have phone support. We have email support. We have a full um, self-help library with tons of articles and walkthroughs. Um, there's a little question mark icon that you'll see when you're in your account playing around. Uh, you can pop that open, search the existing tools that we have available, or email us if you have any questions. Uh, we're here to help make your spring fundraising campaign a success, answer any questions that you might have. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out to us. And with that, I am going to open it up for a few minutes of questions if we've got any that have come in. Uh, so again, please feel free to type any questions into the GoToWebinar control panel. Um, if you have any questions after you get off today's call, you can feel free to email us at support at mightycog.com. Let's take a look. When we establish a campaign, can we use the gagives.org link on our nonprofit website? Where's the criteria for the rules for using the GA Gives link? So, um, absolutely, you're welcome to use the gagives.org link on your nonprofit website. Um, you are, your nonprofit has access to the GA Gives platform on a year round basis. So, at any time of the year, whether a part of the Giving Tuesday campaign or any other time of the year, you can come back to the GA Gives platform, create a campaign, and share that campaign just in the same way that you would during Giving Tuesday, whether it's on your website, in emails, in social media. Um, there's, there's no rules necessarily on when you can and can't share that. Uh, of course, during the fall in December as a part of the Giving Tuesday campaign, uh, funds that you raise might make your organization eligible for uh, additional um, prizes that the George Center for Nonprofits is giving out, uh, and you might have access to a wider uh, net from the media and outreach efforts that the Georgia Center for Nonprofits is doing to promote the Giving Tuesday campaign. Uh, but you are absolutely welcome to use the fundraising tools, the Georgia Gives platform, in the exact same way at any time of the year, uh, whenever your nonprofit has a fundraiser that might benefit from that. Uh, next question, if a current or lapsed donor wants to update their giving, do they need to create a profile on George Gives? Um, yes. So if, if you have somebody that wants to start a recurring donation, they do need to have an account on the platform. A donor making a one-time gift doesn't need to have a donation. They don't need to have an account. They can just donate as, as a guest and move on. But for somebody to have a recurring donation, they do need to create an account with the platform. Very easy to do so. Uh, they can you know, connect to their Google account or use their email. Um, by creating an account on the platform, Mighty Cause will not be emailing those donors. We're, we won't solicit those donors. They're your donors. Um, of course, we'll send them their donation receipt and answer support questions that they might have. Um, but we won't be contacting or marketing your donors. So they're just creating that account so that they can store their uh, information for a recurring charge uh, and or come back in, update that account, see their giving history, um, access an, an updated donation receipt, whatever it might be. And of course, we do have customer support that's available to help those donors as well. So if you do have donors that are creating recurring uh, gifts for you or you know needing to access the past receipt or want to access their donation history, for example, they can always contact support at mightycause.com and we will help them as well. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions yet. So uh, with that, I'll go ahead and uh, end the, the webinar a few minutes early. Um, as I mentioned, if you do have any questions after you get today's uh, recording and you start thinking through your spring campaign, you'd like to talk to somebody on our team about ideas you have for your uh, fundraiser and how you can make it work best on the platform, feel free to reach out to us at support at mightycause.com. Uh, and we will be sending the recording to everyone who registers uh, shortly after today's uh, webinar has finished. So thanks everybody for joining us today. Thanks to Louisa from the Georgia Center for Nonprofits for being here with us. Uh, we hope to see you on the platform soon for spring fundraising. And of course, we will look forward to seeing you back on the platform again in the fall for Giving Tuesday. Thanks everyone.